Over Christmas, I heard a quote from a Spanish priest who said that in the morning, um, when he celebrates Mass, he is the priest and our Lord is the victim. And then during the whole day, he is the victim and our Lord is the priest. It's kind of an image of, of uh, a practical way to live our daily life. Um, this whole week we've been hearing the letter of the Hebrews speaking about the priesthood of Christ and how he is now the eternal high priest and there's no no such thing as like a new group of priests that's going to come around you know like from some kind of bloodline and, and offer certain sacrifices and do kind of rituals that's all over it's Christ who is the eternal high priest he's the only priest and then in our ministerial priesthood we've received ordination into his priesthood so we are alter Christus we're not individuals and doing some I don't know participating in some strange way we are the priest of Christ in in the mass offering the one sacrifice the one mass and as priests it's um it's something that should always continuously be renewed in us these these words that you are a priest forever you are a priest forever those are words that are very profound because we are priests forever for all eternity we will be priests and we will have uh, we'll have our minds blown obviously in heaven when we like the cure of ours says it's going to be an eternity it's not even going to be enough but in a whole eternity of of if deepening into this mystery of what a priest is this configuration to christ my soul has a seal on it that's been it's been sealed ontologically changed into a, into a priest a priest of jesus christ and the ministerial priesthood is set up for the common priesthood because every baptized Christian participates in the common priesthood. And I think it's, it is underestimated, the power of the common priesthood as well. Um, the, the three munera, it's called. The, you're, you're baptized into this munera, three munera, triple munera of Christ. It's, it's, a, it's the office of, of Christ which you participate in, which is the priestly office, the kingly office, and the prophetic office. And the psalm that we've been repeating this week, um, it is the psalm that you are a priest forever, according to the line of Melchizedek. He's, I guess the Hebrew says, like he doesn't, we don't know, like he has no father or mother in a way of saying like he's, he's also kind of like this, this line of priesthood which is eternal which symbolizes obviously the the one priesthood that we have now in Christ but um you are a priest forever according to the line of Melchizedek and it says that yours is princely power in the day of your birth in holy splendor before the day star like the dew i have begotten you and the lord has sworn and he will not repent you are a priest forever according to the line of Melchizedek so this um, this idea that yours is a princely power in the day of your birth goes back to this idea of baptism when we were reborn into Christ. We, were, we have a princely power because our Father is the King. We are born into the sonship of God. We are made sons of God. And in this sonship, we have rights as princes because we are sons in the Son. He is princes. He is the sons of the King. So as far as a practical idea of your common priesthood, which I think a lot of people need to really delve into, just like a, an ordained priest has to always go back into that seal that he has on his soul, Columba Marmion, is in, he, he's, he's written a lot about Christ, the ideal of the priest, and I, the ideal of the monk, but he repeats this idea of going back into yourself and meditating on that seal, that sacred seal that you have ontologically on your soul to go back into that and to pull from that um, spiritual um, nourishment and power and energy and strength to continue on your priesthood. The same is to be said for baptized, all baptized Christians, to return to that seal of baptism and to enter into that office of a priestly, common priesthood. It's not an ordained ministry, but it's a common priesthood that you have, and to make your lives an offering. Um, a living host, as Paul says, so that every single thing that you come across on your daily, on a daily basis, it could be something as simple as if the kids leave a mess and they're off into school or they've done something that they've done a million times and you've corrected them so many times and you're picking it up, 
Like that right there is your living host that you're offering as a priest to God. And you think it's like, okay, that's, that's like, there's no glory in that. But there is because you're making something mundane and really ordinary into an offering, into a, like I said, a living host. And you're offering that up as a priest. It's your, your priestly role is to be offering up sacrifices. And it's not like obviously like bulls and, and, and flesh. They're the things of every single day. And then if we get into this habit of, of offering it up, lifting up our hearts as this living host, lift it up to the Lord in these moments that are, that are tough and trialing, you say, Lord, I lift up my heart to you. I lift it up to you as a living host, as a living sacrifice. It transforms everything in, of your daily life and you become a saving priest, a mediator. And who knows what he can do with those offerings. But he needs these offerings. He needs you to be exercising your priesthood, your common priesthood. And you, uh, you need to have that princely power awakened in you. And it's real. It's a reality. Your seal and your soul of baptism is a reality. These three offices that you've inherited is a reality. And I think we need to be woken up to these realities. And that's, that's your job. And to enter into this, this daily sacrifice of the Mass, when when we do come into the mass and you do have the offertory that's when you go back and you remember all these little sacrifices that you had throughout the day and they come to you and they make them present and then you put them into the offering and it's that is a it's a it's a sterile piece of bread it's an object and that becomes a living host it becomes christ and you've put everything into that that was your offering all those sacrifices during the day that you were offering up you put them into this one offering the one mass and it also pulls you in. It's, that's true active participation because the active participation many times happens during the day when you're living your daily life and then you can bring it into that moment of the Mass. We'll ask our Blessed Mother to make us more conscious of these realities which we always seem to be asleep to because that's just obviously the objective that the devil has is it's not to reveal himself to us but just to kind of um, conceal like everything that needs to be really kind of present to us every day he does a very good job concealing it and we look more at our navel we look at ourselves instead of looking at the seal that's in our heart that makes us princes of such a high king amen